Hello, welcome to once again another edition of Money and Markets, and I'm Charles Ward, your host. Well, 2019 is here. Unlike all new beginnings, there are always targets that are set. Some people prefer to call them resolutions, things we want to accomplish in a year. However, for these to become reality and successful, there has to be certain business virtues and principles we have to respect. But that we'll be discussing a little later on this show. Again, welcome to the show. But first, we're going to look at what is being done to include more Ugandans in the financial sector because you need that support to make it in business in this segment. Sector deepening Uganda, what exactly do you do? I mean, for a Ugandan who's hearing this for the first time. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, the work that we do is meant to improve financial markets in Uganda. What does that mean? The core is really to make sure that we help institutions within government, but also the private sector as they work to provide services, especially to the poorest of the poor. People within cities have access to banks, we have access to mobile money, but the question is how do we make sure people in rural areas get access to financial services? We think that's important because financial services is one of the things people need to reduce their vulnerability. If they have a savings account, they can put money into that savings account and use it on a rainy day. If they have insurance, they can use it when their children get sick or any other calamity comes upon them. So for us, the question really is, how can we use access to financial services to improve Uganda's development prospects overall? And at the lowest level, how can we make sure that people's lives are changed by reducing their vulnerability? Share with us some of the initiatives that have been made by the different stakeholders in the finance sector to bring finance services closer to the people. An initiative that we are especially happy that we've been part of is that of agency banking. And that has brought commercial banks to people in rural areas through agents. And through that, we do think that there is the potential for people that have never had access to financial services to have access to the biggest and best banks in the country. And eventually, hopefully, uh, microfinance institutions will also be able to have agents. Why do we think that's important? Competition is important. People need to be able to choose who provides their services and they need to be able to basically talk with their wallets to say, I'm not getting the service I need from Bank A, therefore I'll go to Bank B. And people, especially people at the bottom of the pyramid, haven't had that privilege before. And we think it's very important for the development of the sector, but also for people to have that choice. Another thing that we have been involved in besides um, um, agency banking is in the area of insurance. We're running a challenge fund right now and part of the challenge fund has been to mobilize people um, within the insurance sector to really challenge them to say what do you need to get services to the bottom of the pyramid. Insurance penetration in Uganda right now is less than 1%, and that's an abysmal figure. So the question is, we've actually put the challenge back to them to say, we will help you to reach out to end customers that you never thought were possible. These are the targets that we expect, and we think it's important because ultimately what ends up happening, even if someone saves a little money, if their child gets sick, all that money goes. And we think that insurance can be one of the main tools that helps provide a buffer so that every time there's an emergency in their family, they're not falling back below the poverty line. It's one thing to bring services closer to the people and another for the people to benefit from these services. Do you believe that the people of Uganda, especially those at the bottom of the pyramid, have been able to benefit from these services? It's a learning process and I think financial institutions are obviously still learning and part of the role we've played has really been helping them better understand what poor people's needs are but also people that have historically not had access to services, be they refugees, be they youth um, and also people in informal employment. 
But I think going back to your question, financial access to financial services is only one of the ways to improve people's lives. And the role we play is making sure that at least access to financial services is good. We are well aware that banking fees are high. Those are conversations that we do have with financial services providers to say, your margins, yes, you do need those margins, but ultimately the market that is out there will far surpass margins if you're able to provide them an affordable service. And so these are conversations that are ongoing with banks and banks do understand that ultimately they need more than the current customer base they need. And also in order for them to be competitive into the future, they do need to tap into the youth population now. They do need to understand the informal market because that is where money of the future will be not with people who are employed formally. And so part of this process is helping them understand future markets, um, but then also having them compare to examples of what has happened in other countries that have been successful in financial inclusion and seeing how financial inclusion can ultimately help their bottom line. If there's one thing that you'd like to get from the different key stakeholders in this space, that is government, the finance service providers, and the business community or the people of Uganda, what would be that one thing you'd like to see from each of those constituents? From government, I would say consistency. We have the roadmap with the National Financial Inclusion Strategy. The various players, be it Bank of Uganda, Ministry of Finance, are all on board. Let's make sure that we actually follow through on the plan that we have in place because the targets that we have set will actually get us to the finish line in the next three or four years. And that's very important, not only because we've set these targets, but it helps improve Uganda's competitiveness if the financial markets are developed. From the private sector perspective, from financial um, service providers, I think it's important for them to start to be more creative and understand new markets. Gone are the days where you only give loans to people that have jobs for whom you can know what their credit scores are. You need to go into alternative credit scores. How can you understand someone's mobile money use to create a, form, a formal credit score? How can you understand how a woman in a market sells her goods and turns over her money every day? How can you build trust ultimately with that woman in the market with a Boda Boda driver so that they can put their money in your institution? Not only you keeping it safe, but ultimately you use those reserves to grow your own. And for the people out there, I think my main uh, urge or ask is, we do have a stable banking system. Let's use it. Let's make sure we save our money in places that are safe. These are banks, these are microfinance institutions. Putting our money under the mattress and the pillow is not safe. Nice one.